Now, you've got all this wonderful high-tech equipment. You've got your solar telescopes, you've got your cameras, you've got your laptop, you've got your computer. You've also got a very, very bright sun. Now that will affect the contrast, um, especially during the daytime. And if you want to observe the sun or image the sun effectively, how do you, how do you compensate for that? Well, here comes the trusty blanket. Um, it looks very silly. It can look um, however you want it to look. It can be a simple picnic blanket or whatever. What you typically will do though, is you'll place this over your head. Uh, you'll be sitting at the observing position and it will shield you from a lot of the sun itself. It will you know, reduce the amount of sun that's hitting your face. So you know, reducing maybe the need for sun tan lotion or uh, those kind of things if you should so wish. Some people decide to build a more permanent setup. Um, typically this can involve a table and something as simple as a tub like this. Well, the tub will sit on the table and the blanket can go over that giving you again effective protection and cover. Um, the tub is also useful um, in this case as we've got holes in the side for passing the cables from things like a laptop which can be sitting inside here uh, directly to the telescope itself to the cameras or to the mount if you're using mount control software from your laptop computer. This is a very effective way to shield you from the sun either from uh, the light itself um, from the sun so that you're not exposing yourself to too much of the harmful sun's rays during the day and to also improve the contrast that you may be seeing on your laptop screen which will be covered inside the blanket uh, here. Um, it's very simple, very effective. Most hardware stores will supply you one of these and a picnic table for a few pounds. In terms of imaging the sun, uh, a lot of our amateur uh, solar images tend to prefer and use uh, the webcam high frame rate approach. What we're seeing here is a live view of the sun. I can move the sun about against my target. We've got an illuminated uh, rectangle type target, crosshair target here, which allows me to position either the entire solar disk at low magnification or specific features such as these active regions, which we're looking at here in hydrogen alpha or this nice filament group here, again in hydrogen alpha light. Um, the camera settings depend on the type of camera you're using. Uh, this is a Luminera Skynix camera, um, a Skynix 2 one camera. So I've set the exposure here um, using the exposure control in the top left um, corner of the screen. We're currently working at a frame rate of around about 15 frames per second, uh, not capturing. What I'm doing at the moment is setting up the camera for a, a kind of optimal view of the whole solar disk. The controls you typically will adjust will be the exposure control and maybe the gain control if the image is quite bright, but typically you'd only need to really adjust the exposure control. We can drop the exposure down, um, keeping an eye here on the histogram. Ideally you want the histogram to uh, produce a peak around about just over halfway um, if you're doing the uh, image of the sun. Prominence is it's a very different thing altogether because what you typically get with prominence imaging is a very burnt out, overexposed uh, view of the main uh, solar disk itself and then you see the prominences uh, around the edge. We'll show that in a, in a little while. So we've got our Luminera camera software set up. We can move the sun into position and then we just record our frames. We click on the record option and we're capturing in at between 10 and 15 frames a second with this camera. Some cameras work up to 60 frames a second such as the DMK uh, 2.1 series cameras or some of the Luminera 2.0 cameras uh, and other cameras from companies like Point Grey, Research etc. Um, once you've captured enough frames, and typically on a good scene, clear day like this, it can be anywhere between maybe 500 to 1,000 frames, you can then take them away for post-processing and stacking in applications like Registax or AVStack. Um, so here we can see the entire solar uh, surface uh, itself in hydrogen alpha light. We've got quite a few nice little um, active regions uh, surrounded by sun, uh, surrounding sunspots here. Um, we've got this nice little filament group, as I said, going over to the edge. If I increase now the exposure on this, what we'll see is the surface completely disappear. If I now increase the gamma control setting, what you're now beginning to see is these prominences. These are gigantic kind of explosions on the edge of the sun. The filaments are very similar, but they're coming at you more uh, face on kind of angle. Uh, the prominences that we can see here, typically these can even be the size of the Earth um, or larger. Uh, and this one we're seeing here is probably roughly about the size of uh, maybe one of the outer gas giant planets like Saturn or Jupiter. Um, prominences will appear almost on a daily basis. So even while the sun was relatively quiescent and uh, not really doing much in white light, uh, what we could see in hydrogen alpha was prominences and filaments almost on a daily basis. And that's why hydrogen alpha is one of the most popular ways of observing the sun. So if we were to do a whole shot of the sun where we were doing, for example, the surface and the prominences, you typically maybe shoot one or two or three or maybe more videos of the surface between 500 to 1,000 frames, stack those together and create the final image using Photoshop. 
um, then you would typically shoot um, a similar number of images and frames of video uh, using the same software and the same kind of um, settings in terms of focal length and magnification etc uh, and get the prominences. You could then composite those two together to create your final image of the sun with prominences. What we've now done is we've introduced a Teleview two and a half times PowerMate Barlow. Any Barlow lens will do. I tend to use a Teleview uh, PowerMates myself because they give a very uh, good amplification of the image. This has increased the effective focal length on the telescope from its native f8, f7 kind of area um, up to around about f20. So we can see uh, a lot more detail in terms of close-up um, features. If we look here, what we've got now is one of the active regions that we were discussing before, which we can see um, with the sunspot around it. Uh, magnification can be increased way beyond this. You, you will reach a limit where the magnification will break down as you do with uh, nighttime observing. But typically imaging up to f40, f50 is possible with a lot of solar telescopes, like the solar scope uh, products, for example. Um, modified Carnado PSTs where people have exchanged the standard PST 40 millimeter objective for something larger. They tend to work very well at high magnifications as well. So we're zooming about the sun here and we can see uh, that large filament group that we were looking at before in the whole disc shot is now uh, really quite nice and pleasing in the view. Uh, we can turn off the illuminated cross uh, now that we, we don't actually need that. We can see that the uh, image is, is quite nice. What we can now do again, as we showed before, um, the low magnification is we can increase the gamma setting and the exposure setting and that prominence group which is quite small on the full disc suddenly becomes a lot more detailed and pops into view. Um, imaging in this way you can focus more on high resolution images of active regions, filaments, prominences etc um, and again using the same compositing techniques that you may uh, use to create your whole disc with prominences before. Um, you can create much more detailed high resolution images. Um, image mosaicing in this way is quite popular where you may take say one shot of the bottom right corner of the sun and then moving the telescope over to the other side, another image of the bottom left corner and then obviously just keeping going around the sun itself so you can maybe take the central portion and then up to the top and across. In this way, you can create full disc mosaics which are very high resolution. Again, please submit them into the magazine, uh, gallery2010 at astronomynow.com.